What is the one thing that causes aging that nobody ever talks about? Stay tuned to today's episode to find out more. Welcome back, my name is Sarah. I am known as Carnivore Yogi. Thank you so much for being here and clicking on today's video. Today we have part two with Dr. Laszlo Boros, the world's leading expert on deuterium. Now last week in part one, I'll put that in the show notes for you. If you have not already watched that, I would encourage you to go watch it. But last week we really talked about what is deuterium, how it slows down the mitochondria, how it causes us to age faster. This week, we're gonna focus a bit more on how we actually deplete deuterium. The answer is not necessarily to jump straight to deuterium depleted water. I think some of the answers are going to actually surprise you. There are timestamps in the show notes below, so that is gonna help you navigate through these different topics that Dr. Boros and I speak about in regards to deuterium and how we deplete it naturally from the body. So check those timestamps out. Timestamps are actually gonna be brought to you by my two sponsors today. The first one is going to be Viva Rays. Now this is their awesome clip and go system. It's a three in one. So you've got your day lenses, you have evening lenses and night lenses, right? One of the things that I spoke about in length in this episode with Dr. Boros is the fact that our circadian rhythms are intricately tied to our body's ability to deplete deuterium. So I would highly, highly recommend beginning to utilize blue blockers to protect your circadian rhythm. Viva Rays is an excellent product. It is one of the ones I know has actually been tested with a spectrometer. So it does what it says it does. You don't wanna buy cheap knockoff glasses. You just don't know what you're getting. Use my code YOGI to save over at Viva Rays. Check these out. The second sponsor of today's episode is going to be Optimal Carnivore. This is their organ complex. You can use my code carnivore uppercase Y to save on this. And both of the links for these products will be in the show notes for you guys near those timestamps. Now I have been using these prenatally. I will definitely be using them after the baby is here to up my folate, my B vitamins, these essential nutrients that all of us need. I give these to my daughter. We also take their beef liver and their brain nourish product, which is beef brain and lion's mane. Excellent products. And again, my code carnivore uppercase Y will save you 10%. There's a link down in the show notes. And I hope that you enjoyed today's episode with Dr. Laszlo Boros. Have a great day. And I guess jumping to the topic of uh, deuterium depleted water, uh, that's something that I think is again, be, gained a lot of popularity. There's a lot of people talking about it. Um, is there anyone that you would say probably should not try to do a deuterium depleted water protocol? Well, there is, and there are ways of measuring deuterium in your breath and yes. your saliva and your urine. Um, and yeah, you want to know first, like where you are in your deuterium load in that sense and uh, some people benefit from water some people need mitochondrial food source low deuterium food source if if you have uh, performing mitochondria meaning that your mitochondria and your oxygen supply is sufficient you may not respond to deuterium depletion through water dramatics at least simply because your body is able to supply sufficient deuterium depleted water from the right food for your biological functions and for that matter maybe deuterium depleted water is not your first choice you first you have to deal with light you have yes. to regulate your life cycle you have to use your melanin to break water to produce hydrogen gas oxygen gas it's we could talk about this for hours, but uh, practically you need to be aware of everything that you are exposed to yes. in, in your environment. And water is just part of it. Light, life yes. cy light cycles, um, the strength of, of photon pressure, the, the, you know, your 
your water breaking and, and hydrogen oxygen gas recycling systems, your microbiome. Those are all very important components. And if you actually dealt with, with all these components that you can actually regulate through your life cycle sufficiently, and then you still have medical issues, then you can turn to deuterium depleted water in my views. It's not that you know you start drinking deuterium depleted water and all of a sudden everything in your breath in shape. No, that's right, not how no. it works. <laughs> no, no, it, it takes time. Yes. Uh, in my case, it took years to 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 kind of change. I I had a, a tumor on my face and it's ah. um, it was a pigmentation. My mom wanted to and people recommended just to go to a certain, you know, just to, and when I was giving my Vermont uh, talk, I still had this tumor, ah. and now it's gone. It's, nobody touched wow. it, expected it to just disappear. It takes years. Yeah. So you start depleting deuterium through life. Deuterium depleted water is just part of this whole scenario. Right. It's, it's, it's really a lifestyle that you have to, I don't like to use diet because that's usually kind of temporary or mm -hmm. just you have to be diseased or sick to try something to kind of solve or resolve to changing your, your food um, and feeding habits. But that's not what deuterium depletion is about. Deuterium depletion is a, is a lifestyle it, based on deuteronomics in biochemistry and historic and anthropology and so on. It's practically just a very critical part of uh, biological systems by employing these nanomotors. Uh, those are proton um, powered nanomotors that have to be protected from deuterium and the best way to protect them is practically just every minute in your life is you're living a lifestyle that is aware of what surrounds you and, and how to um, use your, your inner uh, hormonal uh, natural regulatory processes to be in harmony with your environment and consume just what is necessary to maintain your internal uh, regulatory mechanisms intact. And I think that's that's the key to to health in general, and that's the key to your well being and to be able to be happy because that actually covers a lot of your emotional, your mental, mm -hmm. your physical, um, and your social skills and behaviors. Um, and there's extensive literature on it. I don't want to go into those, but there's. As what you mentioned in the beginning, the, the many papers that I have been involved, not necessarily as a writer or as an author, but I also do edit a lot of papers and I do review a lot of papers. So, um, and deuteronomics is, is my, my main principle of giving advice to authors. I usually um, recommend, you know, deuteronomics type of interpretations meaning that the, the part of discussions would reflect how deuteronomics would fit into any particular medical paper that I review or edit for the literature. So, uh, and I do uh, work for, for major medical journals. So um, th this knowledge, as, as, as you kind of, you know, pointed out, is kind of part of your life in general. Yeah. It's not just a bottle of water. It's you, yes. you have to learn enough, and you have to as when you drive into a gas station, the first thing you do is you, you look for your gas pump and you pick the best gasoline, and you don't put diesel fuel in your gas engine and vice versa. So you, it's part of your life, you know these decision making processes and and one of these processes related is related to deuterium depletion and and consume the right fuel for your body and that's practically grass-fed um animal products that can supply this deuterium depleted water for your 
system if you're still thirsty then get a 105 ppm water or whatever you have around you or have access to and drink a little or a bit it's not expensive mm. it is expensive if you start showering with it and right you, you know start doing all kind of drink four liters of it or a gallon of it and then just <laughs> and there's there's no reason to do down. that right there would be no. no reason to drink no like 10 ppm or 5 ppm straight that would may not yeah. even that may cause some issues would you think oh yeah after all after yeah. all yeah and 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 you save money like going to doctors you don't yeah. have to sit and wait for pay for medications and i mean it's it's a very different life yeah i was surprised myself to learn just from myself and others how helpful it is in certain scenarios but my medical bill in the last I would say 15 or 20 years is very minimal for that. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I love how you say that it's, we have to look at it as a lifestyle. I've had people ask me before, you know, should I do the water? Should I buy the deuterium depleted water? And I'm like, how are your circadian rhythms? Are you surrounded by non-native EMF? Um, how's your diet? Are you eating an ancestral diet? How's your relationship to, to nature? Are you going outside? Are you grounding? Are you doing cold therapy? Are you doing any red, anything with red light? You know, these things, they're natural ways that our body can support depletion. And if you're not, if you just go straight to the water, it's not going to be as effective. Would you say? Yeah, you, you learn, you know, just look into the sun in the early morning when it comes mm -hmm. up and look into the sun in the evening when it sets because those are the, the red colors light. that your eyes your melanin your mm -hmm. retina will process and regulate your life cycle to your yes. circuit your, your circadian rhythm and it's a very important part of, of of being healthy and in the meantime you really have to spend a great deal of, of, of time practically just to look for the safe food source. Um, mm -hmm. If those are not readily available for you, meaning that you don't trust them or necessarily you don't know what the source or where they are from. And in the meantime, you have to kind of, you know, use your mind simply just to stay away from media stay away from advertisements stay away from yes. you haven't had enough of this you hadn't had drank enough of that you need this much of that you need that no that it, really your body knows better what you need what you you don't mm -hmm. it's not through your ears or your eyes what you have to consume it's by your hunger your thirst your your other senses just because nowadays people go by kind of their inputs from from outside External. from unreliable yes. sources and for yep. marketing purposes mm -hmm. and as long as you fall for those your health is not necessarily the highest priority for those marketing efforts it's mm -hmm. practically they go after your money mm -hmm. so you have to be careful with that and when you actually develop something like a a lifestyle or a pattern that you would like to uh, you would like to employ or you would like to use for yourself, you have to base that on biochemical information or just to know how your body works. What is the source of energy? What is the source of of your well being? And for that matter, your since you're part of nature, it doesn't matter where you live or how you approach this in light and radiations and food and everything that surrounds you will eventually affect your health simply because those factors surround you and you have to be very very cautious of what and how much of that you consume mm -hmm. um, based on your body's natural signals and you need to kind of follow um, this lifestyle or at least to to try 
and devote and comply uh, with some of these basic educational. It's not, again, I teach this simply because it works for me, it works for others. Mm -hmm. uh, I have seen uh, people really turning around and literally, I mean, there are, and there are um, you know, cases and, and, and friends and so on, including my own case, but I don't want to emphasize that too much. It's just practically a good life experience of helping myself, helping others. In the meantime, to educate students, to give them credits for their doctoral degrees and kind of push them into the deep uh, kind of realms of proton tunneling and proton destabilization processes in mitochondria and nanocompartment and so on. We can make this very complicated, but I don't yes. want to. I just, I just want to kind of emphasize that the knowledge and the team and the faculty that is working on this is very, very devoted, very solid. Mm. So we are not on radio. We are not on TV. Uh, we are mostly... Uh, in the peer-reviewed medical literature and scientific literature. But when we translate this knowledge to the lay kind of term, set of terms, then we communicate information that is very well established in the medical literature. And there are many arguments and reviews and rebuttals that we have to go through to, to get this information. Uh, to the public, uh, and this is as teachers and educators, this is our job, uh, and practically genomics is just a, I would say, the new um, crucial point of understanding some of the uh, epidemiological disease scenarios or, or epidemics that we see in the form of you name almost it's like yeah. if you are over 40 and you are not taking at least a handful of medications or yes. 50 for that matter yeah something is wrong yeah and i think it's the other way around yeah if you i agree take any medication at any kind of part of your life only unless you absolutely need it because none of these matters that we talked about colored life cycle circadian rhythm um, grass fat food, staying in ketosis, um, listening to your body signals, uh, follow our ancestors' routine of staying healthy and staying in harmony with nature, stay away from certain foods that are not for us, um, kind of beating our desires and beating our, you know, addictions for that matter. I mean, that's the key to health. Yeah. And uh, I just have no better way of dealing with this than knowing about the tomb as much as possible and study this as deep and thorough as possible to give something to people, mostly the naturopathic or the integrated yeah. medical field. Yeah. That's my approach. I love that. And would you say that, so let's, let's the whole lifestyle thing. I hope people understand what you're really emphasizing is a lifestyle where the body is able to naturally deplete deteriorating, but more would be the primary focus. And someone should really do that before they go out and invest in deuterium depleted water. But if they have been doing the lifestyle changes for a while and let's say they have more of a chronic immediate health condition that they want to to solve or to get some support with um with that water is there ever a reason for someone to like i said earlier to drink anything under let's say like 100 ppm would anyone ever really need to go lower than that or what would you say would be a, a good a good uh, a good place for people to start Again, um, I, I'm not a clinician, so I don't know exactly what PPM water would be the best to drink in any mm. particular disease process. You may want to talk to clinicians. Mm. Um, Dr. Dawson, that, that floor, she can help you with that 
kind of argument. So they need to be trained and you need practice to work with a this. practitioner. I, yeah. You know, it's I don't I sometimes yes, they or Gabo show me he is he he wrote a book mm, defeating yes. cancer. The cancer yes. saw those. There's yes. there are clinicians who apply this knowledge. I'm just the kind of the teacher, the biochemist guy. I'm just the the know-how biochemist, you know, expert just to kind of define mechanisms and to link them with disease or so on. But um, in the general kind of knowledge terms, I would recommend or I would say that drinking water between 105 and 125 anywhere that would be compatible with a good grass-fed ghee or or bacon mm. type deuterium depleted water because the food that we and have to feed it uh value is in that range mm. below 120 ppm that's yes. what you consume in the form of healthy food. And you should probably look at Dr. Shomya. He has a preprint paper out that now they fed um, tumor hosting animals with deuterium depleted egg yolk and mm. egg protein. So it and and the the diet itself already has an effect in sur on survival and then you combine it with deuterium depleted water you can enhance that effect but now we have experimental evidence i just wrote a comment about this uh, very valuable but but it's it's it, it's been a longer waiting type of data now we use mri magnetic resonance imaging to measure deuterium in human tissues and in biological products. And so it's it's gonna be part of diagnostics and therapeutics. Um, and we are actually getting closer and closer to the translational applications of, of the genomics or food source or food base. Mm. The deuterium depleted water um, kind of approach has been published and has been explored and it's, it's continuously kind of uh, presented and discussed in the medical literature. Now, since we have kind of advised the field back in 2018, since we started really talk about food and we focused on the mechanism of how food, deuterium depleted food depletes deuterium for our body in the form of deuterium depleted water and how it gets recycled and so on and what disease processes, including cancer, obesity, and diabetes, this could be useful, which are very significant disease epidemics nowadays. Uh, after all, all these scenarios seem to now nicely merge and produce very valuable data that can be applied in the clinics sometime in the future. Wow, so it's, it's still evolving, it's still emerging. And I think the main point might be if, if that's something that you're interested in doing, doing the, the water that perhaps working with an actual clinician to help guide you through that would be more of a prudent thing to do, would you say? Yeah, so uh, again, you always have to or should talk to your doctor or doctors because you know they have an advice, you may have various sources of information and you may want to talk it over with your doctor or, or provide some of these papers and give some of these papers to your doctor um, so they can learn about this why you're kind of making those choices or bring them to the table you can speed up the process with the team depleted water but again you cannot kind of substitute with deuterium de depleted water for the food source of you can combine the two with additional benefits but again you have to watch your body signals of, of really truly are you hungry are you thirsty are you sleepy are you tired you want sunlight you want to kind of take a hike you know those kind of things which would part of would be part of your routine to to actually utilize the deuterium depleted resources in your in your environment. But it takes 
because we lost our smell, because animals, they do smell deuterium depleted water. Actually, humans, actually, there was a study showing that if you put deuterium depleted water in your taste buds, the action potential of those nerve, uh, uh, kind of the input nerve actions would change, meaning that humans, we could taste and we could smell deuterium depleted water from various water sources. I can uh, taste and I can tell what is the deuterium, roughly what is the deuterium depleted of the water that I'm drinking if it's not carbonated or, or if it's not processed in any, if it's natural water source. So, so based on the viscosity, based on the sweet, actually heavy water is, is more sweet. Really? So, yeah, there's, there's actually, if you go to my website, uh, which is laslogiboros.com, or if you go to some of the papers that discuss, or to my Facebook page, you can see a number of, of publications that actually focus on these, because I find these very, very interesting and, and very important to share. We, we lost our ability to taste deuterium in food and in the environment. Uh, you may be able to taste low deuterium food simply because of the taste of it. It's, you know, a good grass-fed steak. It just tastes so good. Oh, I can so definitely good. taste the difference for sure. Com compared yeah. to the junk that you buy in various, like, farm-based, whatever oh, yeah. they sell you, you can tell by taste that, that, that the meat quality is, it's, if it's deuterium depleted. But we could do the same with, with water. You could tell wow. the difference. And uh, since we lost this ability, or at least you have to retrain yourself. I, I, again, I can tell if the water is deuterium depleted, if it's not carbonated. Um, but yet again, um, since we lost our senses, um, we, we have to be very careful of what we consume, where we get them, uh, how much of that we consume, how much we are willing to pay for these kind of recommended food or, 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 or nutritional items, um, especially when they are plant source, uh, because those are not the safest for us. And those are really truly not what we are designed to process and be able to um, kind of preserve our health. Um, and we should live longer. I think we should live happier. And I think we should live happier in general. And the key to that is just to be able to taste the tomb again. But until we learn this, we have to kind of find sources of think the about it, yeah. stuff. Yeah. I have one more question. Um, I've heard of a tribe of people that have been studied that were at a source of more deuterium depleted water where women were having babies into their sixties. They were living, you know, well past a hundred. Um, is it a, it's a Siberian tribe, I believe. Are you familiar with, with that research at all? Or have you? Uh, yeah, the Caucasian mountains and in Siberia, um, uh, people live longer. When I was a teenager, there was on Hungarian TV, there was a kind of a, we got talents kind of show and they had a, a, a group of dancers and the youngest was 115 years old and they were still dancing they were from russia yeah uh -huh. i mean we were just stunned of and they were just fine you know after all i think just like very similar to the human genome project this there has to be a human genome project simply just to map a human beings or um, you know, just to map the deuterium content and deuterium, how deuterium is distributed in our body. Um, in general, longevity and uh, heartiness is just remembering my old days. I did see a lot of old people. I grew up in a small village in, in Hungary and they were they were really, really old and mm. still be able to kind of carry on without like, you know, going to 
to doctors too often, meaning that they didn't even know where the doctors were, or they had a chitty chat with them, but practically they were able to preserve their own. And as soon as the industrial food supply came in, all this changed um, and changed dramatically. Um, in, in Hungary, this started like mid seventies. And as an example, when I was in early seventies, I grew up in a city or a town of 25,000 people and we had one lady with breast cancer and it was wow. talked about. It was, it was a very unusual rare event there. Wow. In fact, uh, these tribes that you are talking about, they don't have a native word for cancer wow. or diabetes because they don't have these diseases. They have to... They had to borrow those words from other dialects simply because they had no, they didn't have cancer for that matter. Wow. And the fertility is very important because it's simply, it seems like the oocyte, the, the female reproductive system locks yeah. in all the follicles uh, in the, in the, um, in their um, female reproductive organ. And uh, they have about 400,000 follicles in the ovaries and about 400, 500 of them become eventually uh, uh, ruptured or, or matured to, to be fertilized with a mm -hmm. sperm. And it happens in the female babies it happens in pregnancy in the from in the by the third month you have the baby's ovaries with all the follicles developed and wow. after that they go into a dormant state uh, uh, they are they are predominant they, they practically they don't they are surrounded by follicular cells so they don't really get involved in metabolism uh, and it doesn't matter what you eat uh, well in the first trimester you may throw up you may have nausea <laughs> you you know this process yeah. because you have babies so your body and you fast you you yeah. practically keep yourself in ketosis you know it or not but practically that's what your body is trying to do if you eat too much you throw up simply because your baby is trying to limit deuterium for these follicles as much as possible. So that's locked in in life. It's different in males because they produce sperm constantly. Uh. And um, their sperm's uh, DNA or chromosome deuterium content is different from that of the females. The females can eat anything. They're oocyte, the haploid DNA or chromosomes, they don't gain deuterium, but the sperm would. So eventually in nature, we know that the males that go to a successful mating fight, meaning that they are lowest in deuterium because their nanomotors and muscles and, and all those abilities are the best in that particular male generation, they will have the chance to mate. So Nature still kind of depletes the tomb in the sperm too, but it's a different kind of, it's a different natural scenario. And we are exploring all these marvels and beauties of nature. And we do a interpretation, meaning that we interpret those findings from the point of view of the tomb. So practically, uh, it's almost like you can explain all kind of weird stuff that happens in nature. You may not understand it from the kind of from the just looking at it, but once you talk as a deuteronomicist, or once you talk as a once you apply deuteronomics to those particular biological principles, you gain a little better insight of why things happen in in what order and for what reason. I agree. It's something that once you learn about it, you can't you can't really see things the same way anymore. You know, that's why can I, I ask yeah. a quick question? Because ah, you told sure. me in your email that you are 
23 weeks? 27, 27 weeks now. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Was your husband also on DTM depleting protocols or it was only you? Just me, just me. We I had, see. yeah, I am I just turned 43. And so we had decided we're going to try for the baby. And we had been trying for a couple of years and mm -hmm. just not successful. And so I changed my whole lifestyle too. I didn't mm -hmm. just drink the water. I mean, that's when I got very interested in circadian rhythms. Um, I mm -hmm. was anytime I could be in the woods, I was in the woods. I started uh, cold plunging and ice water, 30 degree ice water, <laughs> going out on my deck in a big, in a bathing suit in the winter and ice plunging um, red light therapy, just everything I could. And then a, a ketogenic diet, you know, very high fat bone marrow as healthy as I could. And, uh, I did do water for, from September to December. And then one of my friends that, uh, we're all kind of connected with Dr. Cruz and a lot of his teachings, he said, well, if you're going to try for the baby, then stop the water um, and stop the cold plunging in January. And so I stopped it in January and then that was the month that it worked. And, uh, mm -hmm. so that's what, you know, during all this time is when I was just super interested in, in the whole concept of deuterium, because there's so many women that are struggling to get pregnant, not just my age, you know, yeah, I'm older to, to try to get pregnant, but there's women, in their thirties and in their twenties. And, you know, when I was exploring different uh, fertility clinics, they were all booked up six months in advance. Mm -hmm. And then you go and it's full of younger women too. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a major problem right now. Yeah. Because if you think about it, sperm is propelling itself, the sperm cells using these nanomotors, uh, they swim in a liquid where viscosity is very critical mm -hmm. uh, to reach the egg, the oocyte that was released from a mature follicle. And all these factors eventually add up and would help fertilization by the tomb depletion. I would most desirable on both sides, but obviously it would make a big difference even just uh, if you follow a certain lifestyle. I do walk winter time in minus 10 Celsius, I would say, wow. half <laughs> naked, and, and people stop me, the fishermen. Just... You know, there's these ice fishing guys. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, professor, is it, isn't it it cold a little? I'm like, <laughs> it yeah, it's good. cold, but the sun is out. <laughs> right. And that's all I need for that <laughs> man. And okay. <laughs> uh, you just kind of have to use and utilize your knowledge and whatever is available, available in your environment and just learn about this as much as possible. Yeah, understanding if it's, if it's cold outside, you need to be cold, especially if you're a northern haplotype. I mean, I, I, my haplotype is H2, so that's perfect for somebody who needs to be exposed to cold in the winter, but the way that we live our lives in the winter is like a perpetual summer. We have lights on until midnight and the TV and the heat and heat in the car. And we never, you know, we never get cold. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that helps our body to deplete deuterium is, is being cold. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, um, you know, mitochondria have these decoupling kind yes. of proton tunnel. It's, it, it, it would, you know, take forever to yeah. explore all these mechanisms. And I apologize. I don't want to kind of go <laughs> into fine. too much details because that's, yeah. but it totally makes sense. You know, what, yeah. what you're, you know, uh, using as deuteronomics type of knowledge. Uh, I was, when we started deuteronomics, uh, I remember in 2011 or 2010, I, I, called my friend, Dr. Gabor Shomiri and told him, I was in Arizona at that time, and I told him that, hey, Gabor, you know, I think mitochondria produce between depleted water in the matrix if you eat the right food. And he hung up the phone because, <laughs> you know, he, he didn't think he was like 
that important necessary. It was a funny story because after that, we published a number of papers, actually a lot of papers <laughs> on the topic, but even the, 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 the experts who studied water, treating liquid water is not readily just that easy to process that there's a source of deuterium liquid water in our body and for that yes. we have to eat the right food and have the right lifestyle, lifestyle and yes cold and i take showers in cold water usually um, i walk winter time half naked simply because i think after all this all is part of the same story and that is practically just you know preserve your health through natural processes and teaching decreasing is a huge part of it yeah i always say the further away we get from the way our ancestors lived the sicker we, we become and that can be food lifestyle technology just looking at your life as a whole again the further away that that you are from what your ancestors did the the worse your health will be you ride on. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been absolutely wonderful. I feel like I could probably talk to you another couple hours at least, but <laughs> my audience might, might not hang out for that. So um, where can people find you? You mentioned your website and, and, and some of your work, what's the best way to find you? So laszlogborros.com is my website. And submolecular medicine at Bry University, Amsterdam, is where the course is. And uh, just practically looking around um, on YouTube for various talks, we have a deuteronomics YouTube channel. Uh, I also have a fumarate hydratase channel for the English uh, presentations. I do have a um, Hungarian um, channel, which is managed by Esther Boros. She compiled a lot of uh, international and Hungarian uh, videos and educational material, and also the English ones for that kind of set of, of, of talks and information. Uh, and you can find us on YouTube, the BBD Health we have a Hungarian audience, but uh, there are many original English sources published there. And I also have a Facebook profile. I don't use my Twitter or Instagram. I mostly publish everything on Facebook because I cite everything. So I'm not worried about the kind of the fact checkers because whatever I say is always supported by uh, original citations and publications so um and there are a number of of um, papers that i published and uh, there is a lot of papers that i edited and you can find those if you go to pubmed which is the academic source of period medical literature and you just type in my name boris lg or boris and shomiai or any combination of authors that we publish papers and you're gonna see a number of papers related to deuteronomics. Um, all the tracer studies that we did in the past, um, we are actually talking about those from the deuteronomics point of view and that's part of the course to teach students how to use deuteronomics for scientific arguments. Um, and this nomenclature is just developing because deuteronomics, du depletion, we just generate these words and introduce them into in the medical literature. So scientists and also editors and, and uh, authors, they can be more familiar with the process. But it's, again, um, I, my, Biggest kind of compliment from science is practically that deuteronomics never let me down. Mm. And and I'm I'm you know you take a big risk when you go to a kind of a theater. You ask the audience to blow in a tube just to collect their breath. 
and you blindly interpret the data and you ask them to bring some water samples from the bathroom too and just kind of hide them in the samples. And you're able to 100% uh, certainty, you can tell which water samples came from human breath and which water samples came from the drinking well. Wow. And I've done this twice, uh, meaning that totally blindly, just trusting deuteronomics as it is, they never let me down. And as a scientist and, and, and as an individual, uh, and I've been, and we have been challenged many times by many, you know, media and, and you know, professional outlets. Um, and we were able, you know, reviewers and, and editors, we answered all the questions so far. We answered all the questions, I think, with very rigorous and very solid scientific basic and, and, and foundation. And, and I think that's how and why we keep doing this simply because it just never lets down. I love it. Well, thank you again. This has just been very, very educational, and I hope that my audience enjoys it as much as I did. Thank you again for being here today. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, I hope the baby is going to learn deuteronomics as fast as she <laughs> I'll can. I'll be teaching. I'm already teaching right. him. <laughs>